Hi, in this video, I'll be talking about the memory T cells. So let's say our body is invaded by a pathogen. So after the initial exposure of that, our body will mount an immune response. And that immune response is triggered by T helper cells, which would activate B cells and the plasma cells would secrete specific antibodies against that pathogen or antigen, right? Now, after the primary immune response, the magnitude of the response would dampen down but eventually if there is a second exposure of the same pathogen then there could be a secondary immune response which would which would be a lot faster and in terms of magnitude would be higher and in the context of secondary immune response we'll be talking about the role of memory t cell so whenever i say memory t cell what quickly comes in your mind is they are something which has a memory of infection or memory of invasion of other pathogens so they can really remember that what what pathogen that they had encountered previously and can mount an immune response quicker and at a higher magnitude so in this video we'll be talking about how these memory t cells arise how they differentiate and what are the subclasses of memory T cells. Also, we would focus on how by cellular and molecular features we can discriminate memory T cells from the affected T cells or the naive T cells. So let's begin. Before that, let's just go back to our situation where our body is invaded by a pathogen. Now, obviously, our dendritic cells, macrophages or any other antigen presenting cells would be, would be uh, engulfing the pathogen and chewing the antigens of the pathogen and displaying it onto the class 2 MHC molecule, which would be in turn recognized by our CD4 positive T helper cell. Now CD4 positive T helper cell can interact with B cell and leads to B cell activation. Now the B cell would be converted or rather differentiated into antibody secreting plasma cells. Now these antibody against the pathogen would neutralize the pathogen and save our body from that uh, attack right now just after the attack the t cell the naive t cell would proliferate hugely in number and once the attack is done and and the pathogen is dead the immune response is dampened and at the same time the proliferated t effector cells would be actually dying at least 98 percent of them would die but this rest two percent or some of them they don't die and people hypothesize that these become the memory t cell we'll talk about their origin in more details okay now these memory t cells are residing in a quiescent state that means they are in a g0 state they are proliferating right now from g0 state they are poised they can anytime re-enter the cell cycle they can proliferate and differentiate into other effector cells so but there is a problem because both naive t cells and the memory t cells are in g0 state then how do you differentiate a memory t cell versus a naive t cell it turns out the reactivation criteria from a g0 state to re-enter the cell cycle is a lot less stringent in case of the memory T cell. It is easy for a memory T cell to quickly get back into the cell cycle and proliferate. And how is so? We'll look at that. But, and also it turns out that the naive T cell only takes stringent instruction from the dendritic cell to get activated or re-enter the cell cycle. Whereas memory T cell, the thing is pretty much less stringent and it can take information take the intel or the instruction from macrophages from dendritic cell or even from the b cells so the criteria for reactivation is easier in case of memory t cell compared to a naive t cell now how this is possible molecularly it turns out the surface distribution of the receptors co-stimulatory molecules and the adhesion based receptors are very different in case of the memory T cell. It turns out the T cell receptor are clustered in case of the memory T cells, which leads to a quicker and easy activation. And the distribution of all these co-stimulatory receptors 
are different compared to a naive T cell. That leads to an easier activation when it comes to a memory T cell. Now, memory T cell also display a property called recirculation. That means they not only reside in the secondary lymphoid organ, like the lymph node, they can quickly get redistributed to the tertiary lymphoid organ or let's say the site of infection that they have encountered previously. So their recirculation property makes them different from a naive T cell. Now, even inside the memory T cell subtype, there could be different subtypes as well, like effector memory T cell or central memory T cell. But how does this differentiation occur? I mean, what are the point of difference? The point of difference lies in their localization. Especially the effector T cell are localized to the site of infection that they have encountered previously. Now, in terms of surface marker expression and gene expression, these two cells are distinct over past decade with the increase of uh, with the advancement of rna seq technology the single cell rna se se sequencing technology revealed that the gene expression the transcriptome profile of effector t cell and the memory t cell is completely different now the reactivation potential is also different between that and in turn people hypothesize in the field that these two cells are actually generated from a a different a differentiation state of a, a effector t cell we'll be talking about that but what are these differential molecules or the surface expression molecules that differentiate the memory t cell from other t cells so it turns out the relative proportion of at least three important surface molecule differentiated differentiate these T memory cells from other cell types. They are CD44, which is basically very important for activation signals. So they actually increase the sensitivity towards the activation signal. CD62 ligand or CD62L is an adhesion molecule which is important for encountering its target. And CCR7 is a chemokine receptor which is responsible for homing the memory T cell into the secondary or tertiary lymphoid organs. Now the relative proportion of all these determine what is the state of that memory T cell. Either it's an effector or it's a central memory T cell. Now their origin, what are the instructive cues that allow differentiation of these memory T I mean this subtype of memory T cell is still under debate. But based on existing data and model we can kind of summarize what really happens and how they, they they arise so here is our naive t cell which is interacting with the dendritic cell right now for sampling the pathogen derived antigen and it would be getting activated and ultimately it would become a effector t cell which would interact later on with the b cells but this process of naive t cell to effector t cell is not direct it turns out there are several intermediate states. People call it several differentiation state. And it turns out there are certain permissive cues which allow these effector T cell to give rise to the other type of memory T cell. It says the effector T cell can give rise to memory uh, memory cell, but these intermediate stage cells can also directly give to central memory cell or effector memory t cell and there could be an interconversion between the central memory t cell and the effector memory t cell so this whole network is pretty complex and less understood but this is the overall model that is believed in the field right now so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you